Not you lot calling this man sassy in the comment section. Why was I thinking the same thing, please? Thing up and soon. Make up and put it over the wall. What I want, pa, what I want. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. If you're new to my channel and you do not know who I am, my name is Gade Philip or Gade for short. Make sure you guys like, comment and subscribe to the ting. Before we get into this video, I want to give a big shout out to Shan Kamari for doing my fucking hair, guys. I'm back in the process of growing my hair. So, you know, we had to add a little pieces in and she did that in like two and a half hours. All of this. I'm going to attach her Instagram in the description box below. She's so affordable and she fit me in at the last minute and I'm super grateful. Also, I know I haven't uploaded in a while and that will all be explained in a video that's coming out in the next couple of days. So stay seated because I've got a lot to tell you lot. But let's get into this mess that has been happening on the timeline. Today we're going to be talking about Diana. It's Diana formerly known as Tootsie Time, and also her soon-to-be ex-husband, Ahmet Patterson. Now, for those of you that do not know who on earth I'm talking about, Diana and Ahmet are a married couple. Diana is the content creator slash YouTuber. Ahmet is a personal trainer and former boxer. They got married quite early on in their relationship. Now, I was shocked to hear that she proposed to him she, and I'm not saying that a woman can't propose to a man, do what y'all want to do, but to just willy-nilly say, shall we get married? And my man say, why not? Was a red flag from the beginning. They did showcase their marriage on this TV show, then followed up with Diana creating a YouTube channel, then them also creating a couple's channel. Three months ago, Diana posted a video and the title was Let the Divorce Commence. In the video, she details that she's now going through a divorce. Prior to that, she had mentioned that her and her husband had separated. If I'm being honest, I didn't ever think I would have ever known why they would have broken up. But <laughs> after that first video, she then began to tell everything. In the videos, I'm going to attach them in the description box below, she talked about their whole relationship from beginning to end. She did break them up into parts because those videos were quite long and I absolutely watched every little thing. And the most annoying thing about bringing your relationship to social media is that people like to dissect your behaviour, your body language, how one treats the other, how one is different from the other. They like to compare you. They like to say who is more deserving than the other. I've done one or two videos with my boyfriend and I've done a few TikToks with him. And if you guys saw the comments, what is Dami doing with you? Dami needs to be careful. Gada, you're so rough, you're so tough. And Dami's so gentle. If I did not, if I did not know who I was, them type of comments would bother me. I just, I just had to look at them comments and just be like, okay, girl. It's sad to watch someone relive a trauma or have to kind of accept a failed relationship, a failed marriage. Now, I'm not married. I've never been married. To be married for 10 plus years, that is a lot. In the videos, she talks about how she was cheated on, how she felt like there was a lot of manipulation and narcissism in the relationship. There was also mention of both of their finances. She did mention how insecure sometimes social media and the viewers watching her made her feel. They would compare her to her partner, say that he's good looking, what is he doing with her and stuff like that and how it made her really insecure and it affected her mental health. Can I sit here and say that she is wrong for making these videos? Absolutely not because, bro, I make videos about whatever the fuck I want to make videos about. The beauty of content creating, the beauty of being an artist is to channel whatever you feel like you wish to record slash create. But in another breath, I also feel like creating content when you've not necessarily accepted a situation and you're still like battling with the hurt and all that, 
is not good. It's not good for your mental health. Now, for those of you that have been subscribed to me from the beginning, you are aware of the back and forth that I've had online and how I've expressed the mental toll that it had on me. One thing that I can say about all that is that when I decided to create videos, when I decided to discuss things, it was very fresh. I hadn't processed the bullshit that I had gone through. I just whipped out my camera and started talking about it without realising that I'm not yet I've not even started my healing journey. Do you get what I mean? And I I could be wrong, but I feel like this whole thing is definitely still fresh. We are watching it live for free. No subscription, nothing. We're watching it live and her emotions based on those events. I want you guys to comment down below what you guys think Diana's thought process might have been in regards to uploading these videos. To my surprise, now, I come on the internet to see Diana on YouTube telling the people them that her soon-to-be ex-husband has deleted all of her viral videos. Don't get me wrong, I can understand. Imagine having a couples channel with your partner, you separate, that person changes your couples channel to a personal channel, then uses that personal channel to talk about you. It's crazy. But I believe the beauty of transparency is not only showing the good side of your life. YouTube is very different to Instagram and TikTok. I feel like vlogging has changed into this aesthetic -y kind of, yeah, cafes and da 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 But if you guys were around when YouTube started, YouTube was raw. There was no ring lights. It was you with your raw self and just sharing whatever it is that you need to share. Now, everybody has a right to post whatever they want to post. I can read through a screen when something is not right, when something is forced. I can't fault Diana for deciding, you know what, I'm going to start talking about my life. Only God can know what her intentions are behind start deciding to start posting these videos even when she said she wasn't going to. Because she decided she weren't going to do it yesterday doesn't mean that she can't change her mind and do it today. But what I didn't like was just because you don't like what you hear about yourself, how dare you go and sneakingly go into the YouTube account that you once used to use and delete videos? Because it is sneakily. One thing that I've understood about story times is that when you tell a story or when you're sharing a situation about someone, you're going to you're gonna share what fits the topic. And yes, they've been in a relationship for however long, but she's talking about her divorce. She's talking about the hurt. She's not going to mention the time when they went to the park and they had a picnic and it was very romantic. Do you get what I mean? She's going to stick to why they broke up, the red flags, the bad times. Yes, you actively used to use the account at one point, but you're not using it no more. But just because you had the opportunity to be able to worm your way back in, you went behind Diana's back and deleted those videos. That's snaky. No warning, no nothing. Woke up one day, video's gone. What? A video that I edited, a video that I sat in front of a camera for an hour long and then decided to edit. Do you know how long that fucking takes? Yesterday, Ahmed decided to do a truth video addressing everything that his soon-to-be ex-wife said. You can't nitpick at things that someone once said. Just because you're a private person, that doesn't mean that Diane is a private person. How I look at a joint YouTube account is, with two people, it's 50-50. If you guys decide you no longer want to be together and you're going to go off and you don't want to create YouTube videos no more. And if she wants to create videos, she has every right to do that. There's no law that says she can't keep that account. Whether it's morally right or not, she can do whatever she wants if she still has the login. You decided to F off and go about your business. He mentioned that she might be posting these videos for money and she's been having money problems and let get her ad sense or whatever, whatnot. If she's deciding to post these videos and 
it's making her an extra buck. Is that morally right or wrong? I want you guys to comment down below. I have spoken about in the past about doing stuff for money and when go the going gets tough, what you're willing to do. And if that's the case, it does suck. But is that morally wrong? Abuse comes in so many umbrellas. Cheating on someone, knowing that there's a period of time where they're dependent on you and they feel like they have no one else, sucks. You can't, you're married. You can't just get up and leave and decide, oh, I don't want, like, you can't, like, and that's what um, irritates me about some people is you both equally decide to do something and because you don't want to do it no more, you think you could just get up and leave. Up and leave, move back to your mum's house and leave your wife in her yard. Now, whether he cheated earlier on in their relationship or at the end, that, you shouldn't do that. Leave, okay? Leave. But, to cheat and then beg for your partner back and then still not hold up your end, it sucks. Because it's like, what, what was all the begging for? What was all the, what was all the pleading and yearning back for the relationship for? To come on the internet and tell the world that you was never in love and that you're a people pleaser and the only reason why you married your wife is because you just, you, you want to see everybody happy. What? How stupid do you have to be? Because marriage is no joke. Whether you're broke or a millionaire, marriage is not a joke. The fact that these two are going through this and there's now a child involved and you guys are bickering and there's an innocent child involved, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm not going to lie. I would have thought that he would have said a lot more in his response video. I mean, Diana went full throttle. She said a whole lot of things. And I feel like majority of his video, he spent telling everyone that she's a liar or not exactly saying his kind of thought process in deciding why he wanted to end the relationship. Now, you're not a villain for wanting to leave your partner, but you're a villain for stringing your partner along for so long. And that's what I feel like he's not understanding when it comes to manip manipulation. Like, he could have stood his ground when they initially went on their break or when they had space for one another. He could have stood his ground and then they could eventually have went their separate ways but you wanted her back and how do you, and would you and how do you expect a woman to react when her man turns around and says he wants you back i would have thought that he would have addressed the thing about her going to his workplace and finding out that there were days where he wasn't working and he was doing a whole lot of madness her going through his phone having his password and the explicitness of it all being found in his phone. He skipped over that so swiftly. I would have thought that he would have addressed the insults, the shouting, the screaming, the fights, but yeah, we may never know. I genuinely feel like all this should have been dealt with before it was posted on social media. This all should have been done once the divorce was over, once the, you've gone your separate ways and you've let that person know, right, I'm going to make a video. Because, in my opinion, you guys were married. You lived together for 10 years. So the least that you could have done was say, do you know what, I'm making this video and whether you like it or not, cool. He did say that she was happy with her to put it in her music but to to see audio recorders of his voice to record someone and they don't know is not cool but in the same breath it's it's good for a person to see their behavior or or hear how they were acting at one point in time because some people don't see how they're acting 
until someone slaps an audio recording or someone shows them video proof of their behaviour. And I feel like that is what's happened in this situation. I feel like since that, I feel like since Diana has come out and said all, all of these things, accountability is something that Ahmed needs to now accept. Accept where you went wrong. And discuss how you both can move f- further. But it doesn't mean that she must now delete all her videos about you or delete the videos, the random vlogs. Like, all of that is petty. Big, big 30-odd-year-old man. It's childish. I'm not going to lie. I've always said, any video I put on my channel, but now blood clot, delete. The only time I'm deleting a video is if it's fucking up my potential progress or my growth. But all the videos that I truly enjoyed recording, all the videos that I put the fucking, my blood, sweat and tears in creating, editing, thinking of, brainstorming, my now blood clot, delete. But I want you guys to comment down below and tell me your thoughts on this. Would you make videos about your ex-partner? Is Diana wrong for making those videos? And could you forgive your partner for cheating? And if you've been in an abusive relationship, how have you dealt with, how have you healed from that abusive relationship? That was all for this video. Make sure you guys like, comment and subscribe and make sure you check out my life update that's coming out in the next couple of days and I'll see you guys on the flip side.